Somebody says fire. Shot fire. Shot fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. The blue seas, flame walks, power relief. This is the voice of fire. Revealing Jesus, meeting destinies with Apostle Joseph Suleiman. Welcome to your favorite program on television, Voice of Fire TV broadcast presented by Celebration TV. God has a word for your life. God has a word for you. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, that the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrows, and is a descendant of the thoughts and intents of the earth. In Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3, he says he upholds everything but the word of his power in matthew 24 verse 35 he said heaven and earth shall pass away but my word shall not pass away please stay glued to your tv set there is a word coming for your life get your pen get your paper let's travel into scriptures as god's word will penetrate your life invade your life and invade your privacy and give you solution and i'll be right back to pray with you after this time out happy view deuteronomy 33 Deuteronomy 33, verse 27 and 28. Verse 27 and 28. The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting hands. He shall trust thou thy enemy before thee, and shall say, destroy them. Israel then shall dwell in safety alone. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon the land of corn and wine. And also is heaven shall drop fatness. I'm sharing this morning on license to destroy. Licensed to destroy. Or you say permission to scatter. Audacity to busher, empowered to dismantle, commanded to uproot, licensed to destroy. It's our first Sunday of Lion of Judah, so get ready to pray. Executing judgment on wickedness is not an advice, it's a command. Stopping the oppressions of the powers of darkness is not an idea, it's not an ideology, it's a mandate, it's an instruction. Putting the devil where he belongs is not a mere human decision, it's a divine matching order. The place where we read, God said, my duty is to bring out your enemies, is to expose them, but your duty is to destroy them. I'm going to begin to open your eyes to see some certain truths that will begin to make you understand the kind of world we live in. As I studied my Bible, I remember and I realized that the reason, Nakato Parashata, the reason why Mordecai was not promoted was because diabolically a man used charm on the king and be that charm a man took the place of Mordecai. I will prove it. It was a charm. It was a spell that Emma knew so long Emma was around. He took the position of Mordecai. Do you know that Esther all of a sudden, Esther said to the king, come to the banquet. It was something the king ate before that made a man's charm work. So Esther invited the king and also gave him something to eat. And the charm fell. Am I talking to somebody here? How do I know? As the king returned from the place, 
the Bible says in Esther chapter 6 verse 1 the king was troubled the king could not sleep and the king said something what shall be done for the man whom the king delights to honor the word delights means excited the word delight to honor means what shall be done for the man who I decide to help willingly in other words hey man this position you are occupying it was not my clear eyes this place you are sitting on it was not my clear eyes what shall be done for the man who I decide to honor willingly he said put him on there if you study your bible the king was just angry something was making him angry until a man was killed the king did not rest if you study esther 7 verse 9 he said and he said hang a man on the gallow and verse 10 said then was the king's wrath pacified after a man died the king became calm. why Naturally, a man did not look like who the king should help. But when charm is at work, you will see yourself empowering your enemies. When charm, when spell is at work, you will see yourself empowering those that want to kill you and fighting those that want to help you. No matter the charm, charm as a day where it fails, charm as a day where it expires. It was not the ordinary eye. The king ate something. Esther knew my husband has eaten something. I need to prayerfully cook something. What does that tell me? As a woman, if a girl outside gave your husband something, when your husband come home, you too give him something. And the charm fell. Life is spiritual. And that is what I want you to understand. Take your seat. Take your seat. License to destroy. You saw the mighty God. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. He's the same forever. Pursue him. 
he will sit on the throne. He start hearing voices. Voices are troubling him. Why? If you read Second Samuel 9 verse 1, you discovered when God was talking about Mephibosheth, when David said, who is in the king's house that I should honor? Do you know that Mephibosheth was of the descendant of Jonathan? You remember? And he was crippled. Hold that place. Do you know that Jonathan and Saul died the same day? Are you aware? Hold that place. What was responsible? When you study your Bible, you discover in Joshua 9, a certain group of people came. They were looking tattered. They carried dry bread. They carried rags. They carried clothes. What was the duty of a king? In those days, Joshua, as they were moving, every nation they enter, they will conquer. Every nation they enter, they conquer. As they conquer, they occupy. As they conquer, they occupy. So certain young men came with dry bread, with rags, with worn out shoes. And they said to Joshua, Joshua, we have traveled from a far place. We, we, are, we are tired. Our bread is dry. Because for days and weeks, we have not eaten. No more water in our flask. Look at our shoes. They are torn. Please help us. We want to be your servant. Promise us you will not kill us. When Joshua looked at them, they looked so hungry. Their clothes has become rags. Joshua did not inquire of God who these people were. Joshua entered the covenant and said, so long you serve us, we will not kill you. And the covenant was entered. Joshua did not know that they were from the next village. They were from the next town. They were from the next city. They were called the Gibeonite. And that covenant was entered. Many years, 402 years later, a king called Saul came up. Saul wanted to expand the territory of Israel. He killed their the at Itatite. He killed the Jebusite. He now killed the Gibeonite that had a covenant with Israel. And God does not play with covenant. God does not joke with covenant. He killed them. As he killed them, voices began to trouble him. The voice of that covenant, because every covenant speaks. When you, when you violate it, voices cry out. Saul will sit on his throne. He's hearing voices. He cannot stay. That is why he called David to play. So that another voice can silence the voice that he was hearing. And voices were coming from all over the place. And Saul could not control it. Do you know, if you said, read Second Samuel chapter 21, the Bible says there was famine in Israel. And for three years, first year, uh, David thought it was just ordinary. Maybe this year, our land did not produce crops. He explained it away. Second year, he said, maybe there's an economic problem. Third year, he said, no. Like they say, this one, water don't pass Gary. And he began to inquire of God. And if you study Second Samuel chapter 21 and verse 1, God said, the reason there is famine is not because of you. It's because of Saul and the Gibeonites that he killed. And David went to the men. He said, please, this problem we are facing is because of you. Tell us what we must do to put an end to this problem. And see what they said. Bring it up. Bring it up. In verse 3. Wherefore David said to the Gibeonites, what shall I do for you? Wherewith shall I make atonement, penance, atonement, that you may bless the inheritance of the Lord? Listen to verse 4. Bring up verse 4. And the Gibeonites said unto him, we will have no silver, we will have no gold of Saul, nor his house. Neither for us shall thou kill any man in Israel. And he said, okay, what shall I do for you? See what they demanded for in verse 5. They answered the king, the man that consumed us, that devised evil against us, that will be destroyed. Are you following the story? From in the remaining of the coast of Israel, verse 6. He said, let seven men of his sons be given to us. We will hang them upon the Lord in Gibeon, whom the Lord did choose. And the king said, I will give them. But if you read verse 7. He spared somebody. He spared Mephibosheth. Take your seat. Look at this. When somebody comes to you and he says, this problem I'm going through, what do I do? And instantly you provide a solution. It means all along you knew the root of the problem. 
but nobody's following me. It means all along you knew the cause of the meaning. When Saul died with Jonathan in one day, the Gibeonites knew why he died. When Mephibosheth was being carried and he became crippled, the Gibeonites knew why, but they kept quiet. When there was famine the first year, the Gibeonites knew why, they kept quiet. When there was famine the second year, they knew why, but they kept quiet. There was famine the third year, they knew why, but they kept quiet. For three years, they knew the solution, but they kept quiet. Be directly under the atmosphere of the outpour of grace and glory as you worship with us on Tuesday's Word Encounter 4 p.m. as we get the in-depth of the Word of God. Also Friday, Solution Service with the Dynamic Mother, 5 p.m. Again on Sundays for our prophetic restoration and miracle service. Enjoying grace together. First service, 7.30 a.m. GMT plus one. Second service, 8.30 a.m. GMT plus one. Third service, 10 a.m. GMT plus one. This is the home for you. Omega Farm Ministries International Worship Center, Kilometer 132, Benin Okene Abuja Expressway, Auchi, Edo State, Nigeria. Psalm 76 verse 9, the Bible says God arose in judgment and saved all the meek of the earth. Selah. 
Sell a miss, pause, and consider. In Micah chapter 3, verse 8, he says, As for me, I am full of power and of the Spirit of the Lord and of judgment to declare to Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. God is a God of. In Psalm 149, the Bible says, This is the judgment written. He said, and this have all his sense. In Isaiah 54, if you read verse 17, the Bible says, no weapon from the gate shall prosper, but every tongue that rises up in judgment, thou! This is the heritage of the Lord and the righteousness of me, saith the Lord. God is a God that believes that people should be judged. He a God that believes in judgment. In Psalm 94 verse 1, he said, Oh God, to whom vengeance belongeth, to whom vengeance belongeth, show yourself! God shows himself by displaying vengeance. Whenever God shows vengeance, God is displaying himself. So he shows vengeance. He communicates judgment. When you are targeted, attacked and they succeed it undermines the power of God in the mind of people when attack comes on you and the attack succeeds it undermines people believe in God the belief that people have in God is undermined is undervalued when an attack comes on you and the attack succeeds I'm coming somewhere. I'm coming somewhere. He said, destroy them. I'm trying to establish to you that enemies are real. Because God himself said so. Enemies are real. Genesis 22, 17. He said, thy seed shall destroy. The gates. The enemy has a gate. And the duty, the command, the mandate God gave to Abraham is your seed shall destroy the gate. Genesis 49 verse 8, he said, Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise, thy leg shall be on the neck of thy enemy. In Exodus 23, 22, I believe God was speaking and God said, I will be an enemy to thy enemies, an adversary to thy adversaries. In Deuteronomy 20, 28 verse 7 and 28 verse 25, I think, says, so shall the Lord cause thy enemies that to be smitten before thy face that rise up against thee, they shall come in one way. In Numbers 10 verse 35, and a repeat of it in Psalm 68 verse 1. Let God arise and let his enemies in Psalm 18 verse 1. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved. From my end. In Micah chapter 7, verse 8, rejoice not over me, O my enemies. For if I fall, I will rise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be my light. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be my light. When I sit in darkness, in Luke 19, 27, he said, But those my enemies that would not that I reign over them, bring them, Makuba Lakateyata. Bring them and slay them. Look for me. Bring them. The problem you have is that your eyes have not seen the revelation of your future. The day you see what God intends you to be. Do you know, hold on. Do you know a certain group of men came to meet Jesus and they called them wise men? I think it's only when a man opens his mouth to speak that he's called wise. These men did not say anything before they called them wise. These men never said anything. Why did they call them wise? Even without opening their mouth, even without saying anything, the Bible called them wise. They had uncommon wisdom. What is uncommon wisdom? They looked at the baby Jesus and today they were seeing his tomorrow. Uncommon wisdom is ability to see greatness in smallness. Uncommon wisdom is ability to see a king in the child. Uncommon wisdom is ability to see tomorrow in a today. Uncommon wisdom is capacity to see the future even when you are captured. 
The names of God are not a revelation of what he can do. They are a revelation of who he is. God is not a provider. God is provision. It is you that is a provider. Jehovah Rofeka, God is not a healer. God is healing. He empowers you to be a healer. Welcome back, welcome back. What a powerful word we just heard. I know you have been inspired, you have been transformed, you've been challenged in your walk with God. I want to pray with you and I believe God that you step into a new relationship with God, a new dimension. And if you need to give your heart to the Lord, you will say this after me. If you want to make a decision to make peace with God, say these words after me. My Heavenly Father, I come to you today just as I am. Have mercy on me. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. I believe in my heart. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. I'm born again in Jesus' name. If you've prayed that prayer, I decree that from this day forward, ever backward, never, may the best of your past become the least of your future. And may God give you grace to stand firm, no turning back, in Jesus' name. If you're sick in body, you are healed. If you're bound, you are free. If you're lost, you're found. God bless you. Don't forget this. I'll see you tomorrow again. This is Johnson Suleiman saying, no matter what the matter is, you matter when it matters most. God bless you.